Welcome to the webinar for Open Dental's Bridge with Edge Express. We'll start by setting up the program link. Go to the top left corner under Setup and down to Program Links. Find Edge Express in the alphabetized list. Edge Express is part of XCharge. Both are provided by Global Payments Integrated. Double click to open up the existing program link. In the top right hand corner, click on the Enable button to turn the feature on. You'll want to choose a default payment type when running payments through Global Payments button inside of the payment window. Keep in mind, if you have the preference turned on to prompt for a payment type, the user must manually select the payment type before clicking Save. Decide if you want the system to prompt the patient for a signature on the credit card terminal before completing the transaction. Note, the terminal must support electronic signatures for this to work. Do you want Open Dental to automatically print an Edge Express receipt to the default printer when the transaction is complete? Recurring charges force duplicates by default. By default in Open Dental, transactions for the same amount charged to the same card on the same day are declined. This is to prevent accidentally charging a card twice. If you check this box, it will allow duplicate charges. This can be useful if the family members have recurring charges set up on the same day for the same card. Preventing saving new cards. If unchecked, will allow users to process new transactions or save new payment information to a patient's account in Open Dental. If checked, this prevents the user from processing new transactions or saving new payment information in Open Dental. Enable Payments for Payment Portal and eClipboard. You will want to enable this checkbox if you're using the Patient Portal and eClipboard for payments. The section below, you'll want to enter the credentials that you received when you signed up for Edge Express. If you are not currently using Edge Express and are interested in signing up for more information, click on the link at the top of this window. Make sure you click Save before exiting and verify that the Edge Express is now highlighted in the light mint green. This now shows that the program link is active and ready for use. Now that we've activated the program link, let's go over how to use it. We'll start by selecting the patient that we need to post a payment for. Highlight the procedure or procedures that the payment is for or click on the payment button at the top left-hand corner if you want Open Dental to post to the oldest outstanding balance on the family. Enter the dollar amount and verify that Open Dental's suggestion for where the money is going to go is where you want it to post when you're done. This can be verified in the bottom left-hand corner marked Current Payment Splits and verifying the doctor and procedure is where the money is currently linked to is correct. In the top right hand corner, you'll click on the Global Payments Integrated button. Please note, the payment type will change automatically unless you have the preference set to manually choose a payment type. Once you've clicked on the Global Payments Integrated button, you'll have several transaction types to choose from. The transaction type you'll use is Purchase to charge the payment. Return is for use when refunding a transaction that happened on a prior day. You'll need the transaction ID from the original charge. You can move the payments window out of the way if you need to be able to see transaction IDs on the account. The Force and Preauthorization option you'll need to refer to your Edge Express user's manual on whether or not you'll be using this function. Void is used to reverse a sale the same day it was made. Once again, you'll need the transaction ID from the original charge. The Save Token option allows you to securely store a patient's credit card number and expiration date inside the credit card manage window that you'll see in just a moment. You can also have this defaulted to check by turning on the preference Automatically Store Credit Card Tokens. If you left 
prompt for signatures unchecked, in the setup window, you can still determine which payments you want to prompt for a signature or print a receipt before handing your patient the credit card terminal by setting the checkboxes here. The credit card entry method determines if you are using a terminal to process payments with a physical card or web service if you're going to manually type in the credit card number and expiration date. Please note, if a terminal is not connected or working to your system, Open Dental will default to the web service option. Click Save to charge the card. Once this window tells you it is safe to close, go ahead and close in the top right corner. Now that it's charged the payment, it will post a receipt if you've chosen to print a receipt. You will also see details about the credit card transaction in the lower left-hand corner. Because I have the preference turned on to not charge the same card on the same date for the same dollar amount, you will notice things like duplicate transaction error where it hasn't posted the payment because it already saw one earlier in the day for this card. and the preference type I have set is to manually select the payment type. So the pop-up told me to choose my payment type instead of having the button choose it for me. Click Save to exit the window. Now let's go over recurring charges and how to set them up. We'll start under Setup, Preferences, and in the account section, the recurring and repeating charges. The recurring charges feature in Open Dental allows you to set up recurring payments to a patient's credit or debit card for regularly due charges, such as payment plan charges or repeating charges to their account. Checking this first box will post the recurring payments to the patient's primary provider instead of using Open Dental's default which is to post the payment to the oldest balance first, also known as FIFO, which may be different provider than the patient's primary provider. Leave this box unchecked if your office pays on collections. Recurring charges use the transaction date. Otherwise, leave this unchecked will use the date the charge is scheduled to process. Recurring charges show inactive charges by default. Recurring charges run automatically. If you choose this option, you'll need to set what time you want the credit cards to run each day. If you uncheck the option, you'll need to manually run the recurring charges tool to charge the credit cards that want you want to be charged. Choose what payment type to post the payments as. Allow recurring charges to run even if no family balance is present. If unchecked, the recurring charge amount will be reduced if the family balance or pay plan debit is less than the charge amount. The balance owed is charged instead. If the payment plan debit is less than the charge amount you've chosen and the family still has a balance due, then the entire charge amount will be processed. The portion of the payment that exceeds the payment plan debit will post to the account as an unearned or prepayment to be used on other family members if necessary. If you check the box, the payment plan is selected in the recurring charges window we'll be going over next. The recurring charge will not be processed if the patient doesn't have a payment plan debit due at that time. A recurring charge is added below the transaction details of the payment note when the card is finally processed. You can also choose automatically inactivate declined cards. When you're done setting your preferences, make sure to click the Save button in the lower right-hand corner to save your changes. Let's go over how to set up the credit card for those automated recurring charges I've been talking about. Inside of your patient's account, click on the Credit Card Manage button on the right-hand side. From inside this window, click on the Add New Card. Or if a card is on another family member already, you can choose the option to reuse the existing card. If a credit card is on one patient, 
and you need to move it on to a different patient to correct it, you can also choose to move it to a patient. Let's start by adding in a new card. Would you like to add this card via the terminal? A no answer will require the card information be typed in manually. I'm gonna say no at this time to show you the option without having a terminal in hand. We'll go ahead and put in our patient's credit card details. And you'll notice the transaction total amount at the top is zero, showing that I'm adding the card and not charging it. Click the make payment button once you've entered in your customer's information and then close out the window once it says it's safe. Now that we've added the card into our credit card manage, you'll notice it saved it in as a token and it's still showing me the last four digits of the credit card to be able to verify my entry. It's storing it under Edge Express and this is now a card that can be used for recurring active charges. Let's double click into this line item to be able to set up the recurring charge authorization. From in here, you can choose the dropdown if you're attaching this to an existing payment plan, enter in your dollar amount to be charged, and put in your start date. The date stop if you don't want the charges to continue after a certain date without a new agreement. Otherwise, you can leave the date stop link this will charge the patient indefinitely. If a payment plan is selected from the dropdown up here, then the recurring charge will automatically end when the payment plan is paid in full. Set your charge frequencies in the bottom section here. You can have it so it charges on one day or add in an additional day with the dropdown here. You can also have the system charge the card on a fixed day of the week. As an example, if your patient has asked that you charge the card on the second Friday of each month when they get paid, you could set up that scenario using your fixed weekday. Keep in mind, you will need to post when the date of start transaction should happen if you choose the fixed day of the week option. Now we can see additional details that have been authorized to charge on this card. The start date of August 1st, our dollar amount, and our charge frequency. If any of the details are incorrect or you need to change frequencies, simply double click to open the window back up again. If in the setup window, you left the recurring charge run automatically unchecked, from here, You'll need to go under Tools, Credit Card Recurring Charges, and highlight the specific charges in this window that you want to run, and then click Send. I'll go back into our Credit Card Manage here and set this that it needs to be run today. That way I can show you what it looks like in this window. So if I'm manually running these charges, I would come into the window to see any credit cards that have been set up to process on the specific date I'm in that window. I can choose all to highlight all line items in here to click on send and run. I can set to none and then manually select them holding down control if I need to skip over people's names. I can see the history of who's been charged in the past. I can print this as a list to be able to work off of. I can change my date filters, show inactive charges, or the force duplicates. Once I'm ready to run a card, I would simply highlight the line and click on the send button. Open Dental will let me know when it's done charging the cards. If there are any patients remaining on the list, print the list and handle each one of them manually. If they don't run from this window, it may mean that the credit card is invalid or is declined for other reasons. Now let's go over some options for patients and how they can make payments on the payment portal without having to contact your office. 
one option for patients to pay their bills online is to post the patient portal link on your website. The patient portal link can be found under eServices and Payment Portal. Copying the link here and creating a button on your website for patients to be able to go to your website and pay their bills online. You can also choose to include in your billing under the Manage and Billing button. In your general message section, a link to that payment button. You can also set up text messages for specific modes where the patient would need a patient portal login but would be allowed to click on a link after getting their statement electronically and pay their bill online that way. And you also have the option to send out an email or text message with a payment link. This is done by choosing the dropdown inside that patient's account for the payment button and clicking on the send message to pay. If you signed up for eClipboard, you can also choose the option for send payment to eClipboard to use the eClipboard as a terminal. I'm going to send a text message to pay to myself so that you can see what this will look like. This will give a couple of different options to your patient. They can either click on the make one time payment and post the payment to their account, or they can choose the verify and pay. Verify and pay is where a patient can enter a verification code to save their card for future transactions and see their balance. If you want your patients to be able to use the patient portal, there are a couple of options that you can customize for your patients to be able to get a patient portal link and sign into their account that way. You'll start under the eServices section and in the sign up window. From here, you'll click on the more settings option and choose what your patient is allowed to do when they're inside the patient portal. In this case, make sure the Make Payments is turned on and click Submit. In order to get your patient's reminders to go into the patient portal to be able to see information you want them to see, you can find that under Automated Messaging. Activate Patient Portal Invites or you can add a patient portal invite for after the appointment and invite them until the patient visits the portal, invite them once per appointment, or invite them once per appointment if the patient hasn't visited the portal in a certain number of days. The patient would then be able to log in to their own patient portal. Let me show you what that will look like. The patient will come into the patient portal via the email or invite that you sent them. And the patient can decide if they don't wanna log in fully, they do have the option if they're just coming into the patient portal to make a payment, to be able to click the make payment button. That will load the next screen that looks like this. They'll be able to enter in their details Click Submit and choose from the two options that you saw earlier, just as it is on somebody's cell phone. If the patient logs in fully to the patient portal, they'll have the option under the account setting, if you give them the make payment option in the settings, to be able to see statements that have been generated for them and click on the pay button from here to be able to make their payment on the payment portal. If you have any additional questions, please contact Open Dental at 503-363-5432. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. If you have additional questions, please contact our support line at 503-363-5432 or access our complete online manual at opendental.com. And to make sure you're staying up to date on our latest training videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications.